right, guys, it's 6.04. We're going to go ahead and get started. So um, the AMP program, we're here to provide mentorship and coaching and support to the members of the AMP program. One of the – Mark and Malika put out a, a survey, and one of the big topics on the survey that people wanted to discuss was social media. So um, I don't consider myself an expert by any means, but I do some things on social media and um, I'd love to share them with you. So today we're going to talk about some of those things. Um, number one, the goal of social media, in my opinion, um, is to stay in front of your sphere and occupy top of mind in regards to real estate. So for your sphere, which is the people that know, like, and trust you, and hopefully all those people are your friends on Facebook and your followers on Instagram and these different places where you have these accounts, when they think about real estate, we want them to think about us. And the best way to do that is to stay in front of them um, as much as possible and as frequently as possible, while also providing valuable information, um, tips, and pointers on home ownership and how to get your process started and all that good stuff. And this all ties into the theme of AMP, which is back-end marketing, which Mark D'Andrea talks about a lot, uh, which is how all the big companies um, retain your business, like Target and Walmart and um, Amazon, all these places, back-end marketing. They're in front of you all the time. They're in front of you on TV with their commercials. They're in front of you in your, in your email inbox with their promotions. So we, uh, a big theme of the AMP program is that back-end marketing approach to the real estate business. So today, um, I'm going to talk about social media platforms to get started with. And I'm going to talk about the ones I use the most, the ones that I think are most beneficial um, to our business. And if you guys have any differing opinions, please jump in and let me know as well. If you've got something that's working for you that I don't discuss um, let me know about it. So obviously the big one that I'm going to start with is Facebook, which you can see here on the screen, hopefully. Um, this is my Facebook business page. And I use this to disseminate um, information and posts and reels and stories and shorts and all types of different stuff to my, uh, my sphere. Um, another big one is Instagram. Um, and those, those companies are both owned by Meta now. So they're kind of, um, they're, they're, they, you can cross collaborate on both platforms. Um, Instagram is another big one where I share posts and stories and reels, um, get into, get into more of that, more detail on those. Um, TikTok is a big one lately. Uh, short form is becoming a more and more popular form of, uh, of content that people are consuming. And you see that with Facebook, with the advent of stories and reels with Instagram, they've got reels with Facebook, or I'm sorry, with YouTube, they've got shorts. TikTok is another example of that short form approach where it's just people's attention spans are, are shorter and shorter, and they want to consume more and more content and easier in an easier and easier way. TikTok certainly speaks to that. Um, I can say personally, I have a TikTok account. I've only posted two videos on there, but they both got like astronomical views and a good uh, amount of likes. I don't know if that's fake or if that actually happened or not, but it's certainly, I know there's people probably in the AMP group that have success with TikTok. Um, I know Carice Cumberlander posts on there a lot. And if, if anybody in the room does as well, um, speak up and let me know what your experience is on there. But TikTok, it, it seems to me is a way that you can gain a, a large following really quickly if you've got captivating or funny content. Um, so TikTok, LinkedIn is an old school one. Um, I'm not, I, I have a LinkedIn account. I have posts on there. Can I say I ever got a, a business lead or a deal, you know, something that turned in from a deal from, from LinkedIn? No, but it is a way that people search professional profiles a lot. So I think it is at least worth having a profile on there and having a little bit of content that people can dig into on there. Um, and YouTube, uh, we talk about YouTube a lot on the AMP platform. I think everybody in this call right now and everybody on the AMP platform should have a YouTube channel. Um, I've got one here. Uh, I'm not as active on it as I should be, but I am decently active on it. You can see a lot of my uh, new listings and things on there. A few of these videos got some a good amount of likes. Um, the ones that got the most, I paid for those likes through a Google ad. But um, 
YouTube page is is great to have. You can share that to all your other show, socials. So we're talking about Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube. Is there anybody in the room or anybody on the call that has accounts on any other platforms that I did not list there? Speak up if you do. Okay. Um, Justin Estena. Yeah, um, go ahead, Dana. Consider, would you consider like um, next door like a platform? I mean, I'm not sure where that platform. Uh, I, I don't know. To. That's a good question. I guess next door could be considered a social media platform. I know it's very popular for if you live in a subdivision to know what's going on in your subdivision. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, do, do you what's your experience with next door? Do you find it valuable in your business? Well, I have one, but I don't really post anything to it i mean just not sure what the value is quite yet but i have one set up so yeah. well mark hutchinson comes to mind because he does a lot of neighborhood related stuff and uh i think that if it's a if it's an avenue for you to touch people in your neighborhood and in, in in regards to getting in front of them with whether it be like i don't know what kind of stuff you can post on there if you can post like recently sold stuff or uh, information about the subdivision, I, I get, I would assume that it would be a valuable place to get in front of people. I don't know how much personal or business stuff you can promote on there, but if you can, then I think it's a great way. Next door has a business page that's separate from the personal page that you can post stuff. I, I post a lot of business stuff on the regular next door. I post very little on the business side. I use it just like Facebook. Okay. And do you get, uh, do you engage conversation on there with that, Mark? Do people, do people interact with it? Yes, there are. There's lots of interactions on, on next door. Uh, there's a lot of garbage. There's 20 times more pieces of garbage on next door than, than there is Facebook. So you just have to get, have to understand that in dealing with next door. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, Sheila Howell says the benefit of LinkedIn is that you have, if you have a large network, you should invite them to follow you. And I agree with that. Uh, Carla Kiernan says Snapchat. Snapchat is a big one, popular, uh, similar to TikTok in some ways, but um, different in its own rights. I guess having a Snapchat account would be useful as well because there's a lot of person to person interaction that goes on on Snapchat. Um, I did have a personal Snapchat. I never used it for 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 business, and I haven't used the personal one in a long time. But I can see where there could be um, a good following on Snapchat as well. So, thank you for those comments in the chat. So we've talked about Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube, Snapchat, um, Nextdoor. So those are all great examples of places where you should have your profile. I know on the AMP platform, Mark also has listed on there, I think, Yelp. Um, I hate Yelp because I was in the restaurant industry and we were trained to hate Yelp, but Yelp is probably a good one to have too. Um, any, Malika, is there any others I'm missing on there? No, okay. So I think that covers it. That is a, that's a breakdown of uh, the major places when we talk about social media that, that we should have our accounts. Everybody's different. Everybody's got their niche and their lane. Um, everybody's got uh, different skills. So some of these platforms might lend more heavily towards those skills than others. Like if you're if you're big on like short form, funny videos, TikTok might be the place where you can post stuff and, and, and garner a large following. Um, if, if you're all about uh, long form interview type videos, YouTube could be a better place for you to, to post. But it's good to it's good to be present on all of these places because what does it do? It helps us stay top of mind with our sphere of influence. Um, I want to I want to focus in on Facebook for a minute. I know this might be pretty split, and you guys in the chat can tell me um, what the case is for you individually. I see a mix of people posting um, real estate related stuff from their personal page, their personal Facebook page, and from a Facebook business page. So people in the chat, people in the room. Do you guys have a business page that you post from on Facebook or do you post from your personal page? Joe, Joe in the room says personal. 
Malika in the room says business. Don't be afraid, guys. What do you okay? I see some in the chat here. Um Tony says more personal. Sheila says business page mostly. Megan says I do both, but mostly from personal. Carla says personal. Ama says personal. Tony says both. Um, Elaine says personal. Tamara says both. Victor says both, but mostly personal. Okay, I wanted to hone in on this um, for a second here because I have kind of developed a method um, with my business, my Facebook business pro profile. And I'm going to explain why I like having the Facebook business profile and posting from that and then sharing it to my personal. With Facebook, uh, Eric says both at times, lately none. Eric, we're gonna we gotta change that. Um, so me personally, I post from my business. I, I created a Facebook business profile. If you don't have one and you want to have one, I posted a video on the AMP Facebook group page today how, about how you can set your Facebook business page up in about ten minutes flat. OK, the reason that I love the Facebook business page is because it gives me access to a couple of things that the, the personal business, uh, the personal Facebook page does not allow me to do in regards to real estate. Got one more chat here. Eric says, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so and those things are a with my Facebook business page, I am able to run ads. I'm able to boost posts. I'm able to pay to boost posts and I'm able to pay to run ads. Those ads can incorporate landing and squeeze pages from my KB core, which can in turn into lead generation. Um, so it would come in the same way a realtor or Zillow.com lead would only instead of being on realtor or Zillow.com, they would see a paid ad from my business Facebook page, click on it. They would turn into a lead and come to my KB core and I would get a notification on my phone. So ads and boosted posts are one big reason I love having the Facebook business page. The other one is um, it allows me to have access to Meta Business Suite. If you don't know what that is, it's a software um, that you get access to when you have a Facebook business page. And I'm going to show you guys the dashboard right now. This is the Meta Business Suite dashboard. The reason I love this is because this allows me to simultaneously manage my Instagram business page and my Facebook business page from the same place at the same time with minimal effort. As you can see over here on the left-hand side, the Meta Business Suite, when you have a Facebook business page, it's got a lot of great tools over here. It looks kind of similar to how our KV Core dashboard looks. One of the big ones that I love is the Planner. Um, as you can see here, these are my social media posts planned out for the entire week. This is why I love uh, having this meta business suite here because I have, for the week, I have posted with the help of list reports, I have posted um, on my Facebook, my Instagram and stories to both of those for the rest of the week. They're gonna post automatically at 10 o'clock or 1030 a.m. every day. The only thing I have to do is jump on and share those to my personal Facebook from my business Facebook. Um, they, they also have in-depth analytics on this meta business suite dashboard they also have ad cam your ad manager so you can run ad campaigns on here you can also track what previous ads have done as you can see here some of my analytics on past ads um just to give you an example of some of those ads i used with kv core um this one here i spent 50 bucks on i got 2600 um my reach was 2600 that means people that saw it or scrolled past it link clicks 376 out of those 376 link clicks, a portion of them um, did my lead capture and became leads on my KV core. So this is a valuable part of my business. Um, this is an example of why I like to have the page. Um, if you are interested to get one yourself, maybe you're posting from your personal page and you'd like to um, get a business page, go on the AMP Facebook group page Watch my latest video on there on how to set it up. It takes about 10 minutes flat to set it up. It's very easy. Tamara, can you show how you share from your Facebook business page to your personal? I absolutely can. Do you use the Meta Business Suite app? Yes, 
I use it on my phone. And I also, you don't have to have the app. If you're on your laptop, you can just click the Meta Business Suite button. It will take you right to it. Tamara asked if I can share an example of how I share from my business page to my personal page. So I'm going to do that now just to give you guys an example. Um, here we are on my business page. But as you can see in the top right hand corner, I'm logged in under myself right now, not my not my business page. So Joe Schmo Realtor is an example I used in that video earlier. So ignore that. Um, so right now I'm acting as Justin Humphreys, but I'm looking at Humphreys Homes at Red One Realty um, Facebook business page. So as since I'm acting as myself, I can just come over here to the posts that I have posted on here and I can just click share on any of these posts. Share now. And as you can see, I'm, I'm acting as myself, but I just shared a post from my business page to my personal page. Now, my business page has about 800 followers. It's a, it's a, um, some might think that's a lot. Some might think that's a little, um, but my personal page, I have about 2,800 friends on there. So my reach is much bigger on my personal page. So that's why I make it a point to share everything I post on my business page to my personal page. Hopefully that, um, example showed you how to do that tomorrow. If you want to drill down on that more, I'm, I'm certainly able to help you, but it's just as simple as finding your business page, which you can easily access over here on the left-hand side, finding the post you want to share and clicking share. I thought that's how you did it, but for some reason, mine doesn't look like that, but I can get with you later about it. Okay. I'd love to help you. I'd love to help you get that figured out tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, you had a question in the room? Um, so Joe's question in the room is, is there analytics on how many people find your business page from your personal page? To my knowledge, there's not. Um, I don't I don't know of any metric that shows you exactly how they got to me. There may be. Um, if anybody knows if anybody's got a uh, different answer to that question, let me know in the chat. Carla asks a great question. Is there a fee to maintain a Facebook business page? The answer to that, Carla, is no. It is completely free. Um, if you watch the, I know it can sound like kind of an intimidating thing to go on and set it up. But if you watch that video I posted in the AMP Facebook group page, you can do it in 10 minutes. And if you've got access to a software like Canva, you can create a profile picture and a cover photo and have it looking really nice and professional in no time at all. Um, as you can see on the screen here, I'm a big advocate of Canva. I use Canva for everything. And in that um, instructional video I did earlier, I made a mock profile picture and a mock cover photo. And I did those in about five minutes. I mean, it took me no time at all. All you do is pick a template and plug in your, um, your headshot and you're good to go. That's the profile picture. Here's an example of a cover photo here. Um, so it's really easy. And here's a Valentine's Day post that I did uh, in about five minutes. Canva is great, guys. I'm going to talk about Canva a lot. And, and um, Canva is a really good tool. $12.95 a month. You can't beat it. It's a one-stop shop for marketing. Uh, going back to the chat, Sheila Howe answered no to your question, Joe. So she says there is no way to track um, exactly if they came from your personal page to your business page. All right, guys, we're going to move along. Um, building your brand. We already just talked about it for a second, but I'm going to continue to talk about it. Your brand is important because you want to be consistent on all these places. Um, you don't want to have like drastically different pictures on Facebook than you do on Instagram. You want to kind of pick a theme and a brand and stick with that across all your, your socials so mm. that there's consistency, so that people are sure they're finding oh. the right person. Um a, a good, great way to do that is to come to Canva and they've got a brand. They have literally a whole thing here dedicated to creating a brand. They have branding kits and branding templates. Uh, I haven't messed with it too much because I kind of had mine created, but um, go in there, um, pick, pick out some templates, some color schemes that you like, 
um, and plug your headshot and your photos in there and, and create yourself a brand and try to keep that brand consistent. Dana Kitchen says, join my branding workshop next Tuesday. Dana, if you can share uh, how people can access that, I'm sure a lot of people would find that valuable. Uh, building yeah, that's going to be just a Zoom call. Just a Zoom call next week. <laughs> somebody, did somebody have a question? No, Justin, it was Dana. I just said it's going to be a Zoom call next Tuesday. I'll send the link out next week. Okay, Dana's got a Zoom call next Tuesday regarding branding. Um, feel free to hop on that to get some advice if you need it. Um, uh, Lyft reports. Uh, so I talked earlier about how I schedule out my my social media posts in advance using the Meta Business Suite and the Planner. Um, a lot of these a lot of these posts come directly from list reports. So I've got a base of posts already, and then I'll throw in videos randomly throughout the week of me in my car, of me at a showing, of me at a listing appointment, of me uh, tripping and falling over, or me not being able to open a lockbox from 1972 outside of the front door while my buyer's cussing me out behind me. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, list reports is a great way to, if, if you're, if one right. of the holdups from you posting, is, what content do I post? You can go to listreports.com and there are tons of what they call shareables on here. Um, if you want access to all these shareables for free, contact Kyle Dines, contact Scott Vocal and get signed up with them. And you've got a bunch of really cool graphics. And so like this one, for instance, you can copy the picture, you can copy the text, and you can take this over to the social media planner and plug it in for next Friday, at, or this one's uh, Valentine's Day related. So this one could be tomorrow, um, and you could have it post automatically and, and, and have it on autopilot and, and not really have to, to mess with it too, too much. So if you're worried about having content, list reports is a great tool to have. Um, also, let's say let's say you've got a Facebook and an Instagram and maybe a TikTok too, um, and you're you're looking for examples of how to make really eloquent, good-looking reels and posts and shorts. A couple accounts that I would suggest, and I'll actually go to them right now. Ones that you can follow, and don't feel bad about copying from them because that's the whole point of them being there. One of them is the lead suite, which is right here. This girl named Sarah runs this page. She's got 23,000 followers, 340 posts on here. And all she does is post examples and ideas of what you can post on your social media and tips and tricks and methods on how to get more views. Um, I'm going to give you an example of, of one that I, I didn't steal it from her. She's, she's giving them away. So don't accuse me. But. This is one that I got the idea from them. Um, this is a, a reel that I shared today on Facebook. This is B-roll. A little bit of music. Hold on. That's a guitar instrumental cover of Redbone by Childish Gambino, if nobody knew that. Um, so this is B-roll footage that I took at a new build uh, walkthrough tour. And it's, it's a kind of a clever little concept here. She says, make a three to five second reel with a really long caption below it. So below I wrote out your path to home ownership. And it's, it's like a really long caption. The reason for that is while people are reading the caption, this reel is going to play over and over and over again while they're reading it because it's only a three second reel. So um, instead of getting one view on this, if it was like 15 or 20 seconds, you could get five, six views per person that goes on and reads that reel or, or notices that post. So the lead suite gave me that idea. Um, she's really, she's really great. Another account, um, if you're looking for content would be, um, I've got it written here. Bear with me for one second. Agent Crate, A-G-E-N-T, Agent Crate, C-R-A-T-E. They're another, um, they're another account on here that's basically just set up for you to use their ideas and use their content. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to find it quick enough. Go ahead. Malika's got a good example of one too. It's well curated.
curated social media. Um, Malika said that this is a great page that has a similar concept. And that you can actually just repost their stuff, she says. So no work on your part whatsoever, rather than other than just re reposting what they've already posted. Is this them? Um, this is them here. Well, let me get this out of the way. There we go. So some of these, like this one with Jake Gyllenhaal here, um, Betty White, you can just straight up repost those right to your page and act like you created them or, or well, they'll see where it came from, but you get the idea. It's real estate related content and you're posting it and you're getting in front of people with it. So building your brand, use Canva to, um, to build a brand, create a template in there and run with it. Keep it consistent across your social media. If you need content, list reports, lead suite, agent create, um, curated social media, those are all great places to get ideas and to actually get content that you can post on uh, your social medias. Uh, I'm going to look at the chat real quick. Sheila Howe says she loves agent create. I got to give a, a shout out to Sheila Howe. If you need inspiration, though I'm not saying to steal Sheila Howe's ideas because she works very hard on them. If you need inspiration on great ideas for videos and posts, go look at what Sheila Howe's been doing on Instagram, on Facebook. She's making some really, really quality content that I know is touching base, base with a lot of uh, a lot of buyers out there. You're welcome, Sheila. The last one is called Curated Social Media from Malika Smith. She said that's one of her favorites. That was a question in the chat. <laughs> Any comments or concerns so far? All right, we're gonna move on to um, we're gonna move on to visual marketing. Um, this segment I put together. This is gonna be real quick, and it's kind of self-explanatory. But some people might not know the difference between these things, and don't feel bad if you don't. Posts. A post is just uh, the way I would describe a. Po these are different types of content that you can post out there. Okay. A post is just a regular picture or a video with some text in it. Um, a post is what all these that you see mainly on Facebook. These are all considered posts, okay? I know this is very self-explanatory, but just bear with me for a minute. A story. A story is different from a post. Most social media platforms now have a short-form um, content branch called stories or shorts or reels. On Facebook, they're called stories. And these are examples of stories right up here. We can see our fellow ant member Kamal there was at the gym, real producers of Columbus. The, the How you would describe a story is 15 seconds or less. It's typically a picture or video with some music behind it. And when you click on a story, it will automatically play the next story after that. And it'll just keep going and going and going. And people love to consume content that way nowadays. So along with posting, I would also I also share all those posts to my story as well so people can see them there. So if I take a list report, and I schedule it for a social media post and my Instagram and my Facebook business pages. I also share it to their stories as well. So they're seeing me there as well. Stories are 15 seconds or less. So if you're making a video um, for a story, make sure you keep it under 15 seconds or they won't let you post it or it'll get cut off. And also stories are in a different aspect ratio. They're in this, I think it's a nine by 16 vertical um, ratio as well. So keep that in mind if you're if you're posting stories. Let's talk about reels, shorts, and TikToks, which is basically, that's all that it is on TikTok. So reels is what YouTube refers to as their, I'm sorry, I no, okay. Shorts is YouTube's version of stories. Again, they're really quick, 15 seconds or less. They're in that vertical nine by, I think it's a nine by 16. They're in that vertical ratio. Um, I think it's Instagram that refers to them as reels. Yes, it is. Yes. So Instagram's got reels. Um, just to give you an idea, let me go on my profile and look at my reels. So again, their video. Um, typically video, they can also be a still image, but, um, this is a reel that I did at a walkthrough. This is with Kamal's girlfriend, Kalise Lewis, who was a DR Horton rep, who many of you may know. This is a reel that I did at one of their new builds. The other day.
not going to uh, play. Oh. All right. <laughs> Another reel I did that I copied from somebody with a funny thing with Conor McGregor. But um, so reels are typically short form as well. I think they're uh, on Instagram. They're a minute 30 or less um, on Facebook. They might be even shorter than that. So um, reels, shorts, and on TikTok, everything is short form as well. So there's a difference between a regular post and a story. There's a difference between a story and a reel. So just familiarize yourself with the different types of, of um, content. And short form is becoming more and more popular because there's something about it that's addicting. There's something about going onto the stories and just scrolling through them or just letting them play. There's something automated about it, and, and people love it. People are drawn to it. Get the, you get a lot of views from those. Any questions on the difference between posts, stories, and reels? All right. If not, we're going to move on. Um, content creation. Uh, post often. These are just notes I have written on here. Post often. Use Meta Business Suite to organize your, show, your social media just like you use Google Calendars to organize your life. Listen, we've all had days where we haven't followed our calendar. Maybe we didn't. Maybe we didn't organize or, or calendar block that day and you're running through your day and you're just trying to tackle things as they come and you don't have a plan and you let the day run you and you don't run the day. OK, we've all had that happen to us. The same thing goes for social media. You get caught up in it. I want to post, but I don't know what to post. I don't know when to post. I don't know how to post. If you don't know how to post, get in contact with me. I'll help you out with that. But the what and the when you can control use, get a Facebook business page, use the meta business suite and calendar block that the same way you would your schedule with life or with your business. It makes it a lot easier. It takes a lot of the headache out of it. It takes a lot of the work out of it for you. Um, and it opens it opens you up to do more organic posts as well. Because if I know I'm posting something that day automatically on Facebook, on Meta Business Suite, um, maybe I can dedicate more time towards shooting a video in my car about what the interest rates are doing today or a walkthrough in a certain neighborhood and what's great about that neighborhood. Um, listings. If you guys have listings, use them. If you don't have listings, go and get permission from another Red One agent to use their listings. What can you do with those? You can post just listed. You can post just sold. You can post in contract. You can post coming soon. You can post about open houses. I do all that stuff. Uh, that's a big part of the stuff that I post. If you look at my business page, um, anytime I have a listings, man, I squeeze every last drop of social media out of those listings. So to give you an example of that, every listing that I have, it's going to have a post when it's coming soon. It's going to have a post when it's just listed like this one here. So I use Canva to create this template. I use my professional photography to fill in the pictures. Um, Canva also has music. So... <laughs> It's got nifty little music there. Um, so post about it, man. If you and, and if you don't have a listing, go and get permission from another agent that, that's got a listing and do that exact same thing with theirs. Just give them credit as being the listing agent on there. Um, we have permission to advertise Red One Realty listings through KV Core already. I always like to reach out to the listing agent to get their permission if you're going to be using their professional photography and stuff on your social media. But Go out, just do it tomorrow. Do it tonight. Go find a listing that's for sale. Reach out to Bob Petty and see if he's got one for sale and say, hey, Bob, can I market your listing and make a just listed post about it on your Facebook? Um, I also do just sold and contract coming soon, open house. Something new that I've been doing is new build walkthroughs. So I made it a goal this year to familiarize myself and to incorporate new builds into my business and um, for my buyers, I want to learn as much as I can to be able to help them if they're interested to, to build a house. So I've met with three or four builders already, and I've shot walkthrough videos at each of those um, at each of those appointments. This one here was in Powell. I did one in um, Reynoldsburg. I did one in Pickerington, and I'm going to do a lot more as the year goes on. Um, post about new builds. New builds are the the models are a great place to get content because they're they're staged. They're beautiful. They're brand new, new, just built. So go snap some pictures of yourself there. Shoot a video about talking about the countertops or something. Um, all that is content that you can post. And you'll also learn about those neighborhoods while you're there. Um, go live on Facebook once a week. I know that's weird and awkward, but just do it. Um, 
you know, I, I went live the other day at my open house on the AMP on the AMP group page and had some people interact with me and reach out to me about it. But uh, one, I used to watch this agent, he would go live and then he would cold call people on the phone. And it was so captivating to hear people hang up on him and tell him to go screw himself. Uh, it was great to watch. So um, go go live. You can go live on Facebook and Instagram and, and people can see that you're live. It, it pops up on everybody's page as soon as you go live and they can click on it and watch what you're doing and interact with you. Um, especially if you're doing something real estate related, it's a really great way to get in front of people. Client reviews and testimonials. The, I post these all the time. Um, I use Canva to uh, create like a cool little template for it. Let me see if I can find one real quick. If you're not collecting client reviews, please start doing that. Um, do it through your Zillow page or do it through Google. Um, however you need to do it, collect some collect some uh, reviews because it's a great way for, here's one here. It's a great way for new, new um, buyers and sellers to see what they can expect from doing business with you. And I blast these everywhere. I blast them on Facebook. I blast them on Instagram. Um, I'll do oh. some of them on YouTube as well. I'll just, I'll use the text from the, the review and I'll put this picture together on Canva. Um, professional photography on your listings is great. It makes for great content. Uh, I, I shoot a lot of videos from my car too, just for, straight from the front seat. What's going on today? What am I out doing while I'm, I'm out, uh, doing real estate related business? If it's, if it's, I'm headed to a showing or I'm headed back from a listing appointment or I'm on my way to do an open house. I'll hop on and while I'm driving or while I'm parked safely, I'll just record a quick 30 second video of me describing what I'm doing with my day. Behind the scenes content, another great example of content you can post a day in the life of a realtor. You can shoot a bunch of quick videos about what you're doing that day and post them. Uh, you can edit them all together and post them. And the, the another thing I want to tell people is get out of your comfort zone. Okay. Um, Nobody likes the way they look. Nobody likes the way they sound on camera. Trust me. I'm a 35-year-old overweight guy with a bad hairline and rosacea. Uh, so, you know, I put videos of myself up all the time. So don't feel bad about it, okay? When none of us like the way we look, just swallow your pride, get over it, and post the video or post the picture of yourself out doing real estate-related stuff. Get out of your comfort zone. Um, I used to get scared about talking to leads when I was early on in my career. And I would ask myself, what's more important? Uh my fear of talking to this lead or closing that deal and, and paying the bills so that my family can survive. So put it to yourself like that. Don't be afraid of doing it. Um, that's what I got for content creation. We got a couple, we got a couple people chatting here in the chat. Uh, psh, psh. Natalia social media on Instagram. She creates really cool reels and posts. It's a lot of steps, but they look awesome. Thank you for that. Natalia's social media on Instagram. Dylan says, for those that are nerds like myself and like to deep dive, <laughs> you're not you're not alone, Dylan. I'm a nerd too. Social media uses algorithms for posting. Basically, the system wants to know you're on the platform and using it. The more you do, the more it rewards you by showing your post to more people. So your reach will literally start to increase the more you post and are active chatting, responding to DMs, etc. The, algorithm, the algorithms like it when you post regularly around the same time. It's a super powerful. It's super powerful to batch create content and schedule ahead, like Justin was mentioning. Thank you for that, Dylan. And he is correct. Also, the more <clears throat> when you do when you make a post on Facebook, let's say it might get a like or two when you first first post and it doesn't get a lot of action. It's you want to respond to every comment because. The more conversation and comments that takes place on your post, the more people will see those posts. So like Dylan's saying there with the algorithms, if somebody if somebody says, hey, this looks great or what's the address here or whatever, make sure you reply to each one of those comments because the more conversation yeah. that's going on in the post, the more people will see it. And that's whether it's on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, uh, YouTube, wherever. The more comments there are, the more interaction there is, the more people will get to see it. Uh, and that was actually my next note uh, during under engagement and community building. Um, more comments equals more views. Reply to every comment. Um, let's say if you let's say you post something, you're not getting a lot of action. Reach out to your significant other and tell them, hey, comment something on this post so we can get some some traction on this. Then you reply to them and somebody else sees it and they comment and it just kind of snowballs. So 
it's a good method to get more views and, and more eyes on your content. What time do you have your schedule for? Malika in the room asks what time I have my post scheduled for. I typically post all my automated ones at 1030 a.m. I do that on this. Now, there's a lot of analytics out there about each day. What are the best times to post? And in my experience, the experts will tell you that there's different time frames depending on what day of the week it is where you can post and get the best results. You guys can look that information up on YouTube or just search it on Google. I post at 1030 every day because I feel like 1030 is about a time about the time where people are through their morning commute. They're probably at their desk or wherever they're going to be for the day. Maybe they're starting to get a little bit bored. Maybe they pull their phone out and they start scrolling a little bit. Um, so that's, that's my um, reasoning for posting at 1030 every day when I automate these posts. Mark is waving at me. What's up, Mark? Uh, Justin is is part of the reason that you do that at ten thirty every day because it it fits into your calendar and it gave you an opportunity to block that time out so that you're focused on it. Or does that have nothing to do with it? No, I, I schedule those in advance. So I'm scheduling them Sunday night. I'm scheduling pretty much the whole week of posts in advance, and I'm scheduling at least the weekday posts to drop at ten thirty because I feel like it's a good time. Sheila Howe in the chat says Meta Business Suite will tell you when your audience is most active on Facebook or Instagram. So if you'd like to really get into the nitty gritty of those analytics, um, those Meta Business Suite will provide you with that information. Sheila, did you want to add to that? Yeah, and it will show you by day. It only goes like maybe three or four days out, but you can see it and then you can um, in the calendar view of when you're posting your content. It will show you where they are active for your audience in either Insta or Facebook. And then you can post, if you have the same content you want to go in both places, you can do that. Thank you, Sheila. You're welcome. Again, Sheila's doing a really fantastic job with her content. So please follow her, check out what she's doing, see what's working and um, and, and ask her for tips if, if you need them. I'm sure she'd be happy to, to um, share some of her success. Yeah, um, make sure you comment on my post. <laughs> make sure you comment on her post. I will, Sheila. I'm sorry. Now, now that you called me out, I'm going to be commenting on every one of them. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and another thing that Sheila does, come here and use the office, guys. you got this big, beautiful office. Uh, it's nicely decorated and nicely furnished. So, and Pete, when you, when you create video content in an office setting, it lets people know you're working. I know Maddie Harris does that a lot. She does a lot of ones where it's just her typing at the computer with some hooks and some captions that get people captivated. And so take advantage of the office, take advantage of new builds that are out there. I can't, I can't stress that enough. They look beautiful. They're a great place to, to create content and get, get B roll footage and stuff. Dylan says a good rule of thumb is basically between is between nine to 11 AM and five to 7 PM. Theoretically, that's when most people are active on social media before and after work, that's a great um, that's a great point, Dylan. I agree. I would agree with that. We're at six forty-seven. Got about twelve minutes left here. Um, next thing I wanted to talk about was advertising basics. So, as I said before, I I like the Facebook Business Suite because it gives me the opportunity to run paid ads and to boost posts, and, and I can also incorporate a KV Core into there to turn those boosts and ads into lead generation. I know, and I'm, I know I'm, I'm bringing up Sheila Howe a lot tonight because she's really advanced in these topics that we're talking about. She's doing a new thing called uh, Facebook forms where it's, it shows up like an ad, you click on it and it asks you, are you interested to buy, sell, or build? And then I'm sure it takes you to another page where it says how soon and it collects your contact information and she can reach out to those people like leads or like Dana likes to call them connections. Um, and, and get in contact with them and hopefully turn those people into clients. Um, Sheila, uh, I know you spoke about this on the Zoom, maybe was it Thursday or last Tuesday, but um, is that method um, bearing fruit for you? Yes, yeah, so I have a couple leads, uh, one really strong. And so, and I really just started doing it in January. I started like mid-December and I turned it off. And that's the one thing that I was saying is once you turn it off or pause it, it takes a long time for it to get back into its sink. And so 
when I was spending a little bit more, I was getting four leads a day, which I can't keep up with that. But that's they great. Were, they were well under ten dollars a lead. That's great. Um, and maybe we'll collect some more information from Sheila if she's willing to share it and disseminate yep. that to the group so other people can can follow that that method and that that plan as well. I know me personally, anytime I have a new listing, I boost it. Um, the one I'm going to pull up my ads here. These are all boosted Facebook ad campaigns. Um, so anytime I get a new listing, I boost it and the, the amount's different. It's usually between 20 and 50 bucks that I spend on it on Facebook, but it does two things. It gets more exposure for my lead for my listing because I can geographically target. I can put a pin on the house and draw out a circle of a, a 15 mile radius and anybody scrolling Facebook in that 15 mile radius is going to see my listing. That's great. That's good exposure for your listings. My listings, more exposure, and it provides me lead generation as well. Maybe they, maybe they don't do my lead generation, but maybe they see my listing on there and they say, okay, I got the address. Let me hop over to realtor.com and look this up. Oh, it's in my price range. Um, you know, maybe I'm going to go see this with my realtor or ask a realtor on realtor.com to, to take me and show it to me. Um, that that's that's a big motivator for me. So your ability to do these ads on the Facebook business um, pages is a big boost for me. Um, as you can see here, $20 spent there, 75 link clicks, $30 spent there, 176 link clicks, $30 spent there, 133 link clicks. So when you get down to it, these clicks are like, um, and it's an average, but they're like 30, 78 or 75 cents a click or something like that. And I'll pay that all day long to get leads and to get more exposure for my listings. Um, I also, uh, I also advertise on YouTube using Google ads. So um, I'll go on my Google ads manager and upload my Google, uh, my YouTube URL. One of these on here, if I can find it, um, I think I spent like 30 bucks on it and it got like, yeah, 2,400 views. This was a listing I did in Grove City a year ago. Um, Alex with Horizon Media helped me with this video. And um, I did this as a coming soon and got a ton of traction on YouTube. Only six likes, but 20, 24, 2,500 people saw it. So I was happy with that. I won't bore you with the whole thing. Um, so advertising basics, that's, um, you know, and, and we have the ability to integrate KV Core with those systems to fill our pipeline on KV Core and to get hot and cold leads that way. Um, analytics, we've already talked about that quite a bit. So Meta Business Suite can track your analytics for you and show you what's working at what times. Dylan, Dylan and Sheila both spoke to this. Um, you can come in here. I think they call it your insights. And you can see, let me get all this stuff out of the way. And you can really, really crunch the numbers on your data and your analytics to see when the best time is to post. How many people are looking at your stuff, what their demographics are, and that way you can you can hone in on those demographics. Which brings me to my next point, compliance and ethics. When you are dealing with ads that are real estate related, Facebook makes you disclaim that or disclose that, and they prevent you from um, from they prevent you from Com, uh, violating fair housing laws. So you're, you're not allowed to get super specific with your demographics because you can't uh, discriminate against any person based on their age or uh, their location or, or things like that. So um, compliance. Also, if you're posting on social media in any facet, um, you got to make sure that Red One Realty is visible on the post and you got to make sure that your name, is, that, that the Red One Realty portion of the post is the same size or bigger than your name. Those are um, compliance issues. Um, also, if you're posting another uh, agent's listing, make sure you have their permission, um, especially if they're outside of Red One Realty, um, and especially if you're using professional photography and your content that they paid for. So we don't want to get caught up on any of that. Also, another big one that I've got caught up on is client privacy. We're, when we close houses, we're all, over, we're all over social media with it, or at least I am. Hey, I just sold this. This... I can do this for you. I did this for this person. I can do this for you. Look at this house I sold. Look how many I sell. Aren't I a great realtor? Um, 
but make sure you're make sure you're reaching out and getting some sort of permission from your clients or having some sort of conversation about what you're sharing in regards to their real estate sale with them. Because I had a I had a client that I was super close with, an older guy, retired. Um, I sold three houses for him. And the, the last one we did, I was so happy because it went sixty thousand dollars over list price. This was during the the crazy time when interest rates were three percent and everything was selling for a lot. Um, and he was really upset and really disappointed that I shared that information on Facebook. He's an old school guy, um, you know, just really private about stuff. And I didn't clear it with him. And I put the I put um, I alluded to the fact that it went over list price by a bunch. And he was really upset with me. So, and I also had one of my first, um, one of my first sales I did for a close friend that I graduated high school with. Um, I closed that one and I put like details about their square footage and their bedrooms and bathrooms and address and stuff like that. And he reached out to me and said, Hey man, do you mind taking that down? Because it's kind of personal. And, and so just keep that in mind too, when you're posting, um, content related to your clients and things that they're buying or selling just just be careful with it nowadays if i put just sold on there i won't even put a i won't even put a price um i won't i won't put names of people unless they're like unless i'm really close with them and i have permission to tag them in in the in the post or i take a closing photo with them and i get their permission to do that so make sure you're getting permission from your clients as well um that's all I have for compliance and ethics. We got a, a, just a couple more minutes. One last thing I wanted to touch on was networking and collaboration. Um, Scott Hoffman, Scott Hoffman does this really well. Mark Hutchinson does this really well. Um, get out there and, and create content with other industry experts. Um, do interview videos or just do sit down videos or however you want to format it. Get out there and create content with lenders, other realtors, title companies, uh, inspectors, appraisers, local business owners is a big one. I know there's a there's an agent named Jill Lightfoot that goes out here in Westerville, and she'll take pictures of local restaurants and local uh, community amenity type things, and she gets a ton of traction on those. Uh, it's something I'm going to start doing. I know Shauna Boatman was talking about doing it as well with her local coffee shops in Columbus. Um, I plan to do one here with Coble in Uptown Westerville in the coming weeks. Um, community content, um, other other industry professionals, lenders, do one with Mark, um, do one with Mike, do one with Kyle, do one with Nicole from from uh, Vol, uh, do one with our our in-house inspection team, um, and and collaborate with other industry professionals to create great content. And who knows, maybe they might be willing to. Um, to help you out by contributing to the video or sharing on their platforms as well. And I think that's all I got guys, uh, social media 101. I just wanted to talk about tonight about the platforms where you can post some examples of things you can post ways to be smart about your posting ways to organize it. Um, I know I just kind of rambled and ranted for an hour just now. So I hope you guys found some of this informational. Um, if anybody wants to drill on this stuff one on one, please contact me. Um, I'm best I'm best contacted by my text or call, but you can also email me as well. I'm here at the office three or four days a week and I'm always available by Zoom, too. So if you want to get your Facebook business page set up or your Instagram set up or get them linked or, um, you know, whatever the case may be, um, reach out to me and use your social media, guys, and get out of your comfort zone. OK, like I said, nobody loves the way they look. I certainly don't. But I still try to post because because I guarantee on those those people's friends list, your sphere of influence, I guarantee there's another realtor out there that is posting. So you want to battle for that top of mind spot with those people when you want to be when they talk about real estate or they have a friend that mentions, hey, I'm getting ready to buy a house or, hey, I'm getting ready to sell a house or, hey, my aunt needs a realtor. You want to pop into their mind first. And the way you do that is by consistently staying in front of them with your newsletter, with your social media with your text messages, with your emails and social media in a lot of ways is free in a lot of sense. A lot of this stuff is you can create a lot of this content for free. So don't be afraid to do it. Get out of your comfort zone. Get out there. Get in front of people. Stay top of mind. Close some deals. Provide some great content. And uh, it's going to pay off for you. One last thing I want to talk about before we hop off here, because it is social media related. Something that I started doing 
last year that Mark D'Andrea put me on to that I was another thing I was uncomfortable with that I got out of my comfort zone and it paid off for me was DMs. Um, Mark gave me a great script to DM people. And I'm going to pull up two conversations um, in particular here. This is Liz Simpson. I went to high school with her. She was good friends with my high school girlfriend. I hadn't talked to her in like 15 or 16 years. I messaged her because she's on my friends list. I said, hey, Liz, if you know anyone who needs a caring, competent real estate professional, would you think of me and give them my contact info? It feels great to get referrals from friends like you. And best of all, I get to work with someone who knows you. Have a great rest of the week. My contact info. I got a it's pretty standard response, which I usually do on these posts. Will do. Or I, it's usually a thumbs up, which means screw off or a heart or thank you. Sure. Um, and then a week later, uh, Liz reached out to me and said, I'm personally looking in Steubenville and would like to keep the price around 175. I'm currently pre-approved. We're looking to sell our house in Toronto as well. My cell phone number is yada, yada, yada. If you need anything in the ball, or if you see anything, please let me know. And I took the conversation and ran with it. I gave Liz a CMA on her house, a net to seller sheet on what she would make on how fast it would sell. Um, I set up an MLS search for her the next day and she's gonna end up doing a double-sided deal with me. That's one example. Another example is a girl named Leah, who I sold her house last year. Um, and this conversation went a very similar way. Um, we had a lengthy conversation on here. Uh, uh, where is it? Okay. Hey, Leah, if you know anyone who, same script, Mark D'Andrea gave me the script. It works like a charm. She gave me the old thumbs up, which usually means, yeah, great. Get out of my inbox. Um, but then she asked, are you just in Columbus or are you in the Valley too? I said both. Oh, okay, great. We're looking to sell soon. Um, same deal. We went through the spiel of collecting the info. I gave her a CMA on her house and that's a seller sheet, told her how fast I thought it would sell, what it would sell for, what they could make off of it. And guess what? I sold her house last year in commercial point. It was on the market for two days and went into contract really quickly. And they were super, super happy. Um, so DM post, get out of your comfort zone, use Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, Snapchat, um, list reports list reports in in collaboration with those canva um, meta business suite these are all tools that you can use to be social media experts start where you're comfortable and then get out of your comfort zone and then get comfortable with that and then get out of your comfort zone again okay it starts with constantly consistently posting and it turns into videos then it turns into interviews then it turns into closed clients at the end of the day so um that's my that's my presentation for tonight, guys. I hope you found this informational. Um, thanks, Justin. Used to do a lot of online business stuff with social media. If anyone has questions, happy to help or answer any questions. Feel free to reach out from Dylan. Thank you, Dylan. Sierra, great info. Justin, thanks. You're welcome, Sierra. Hey, Justin, I have a question for you. Yes, who's, who's um, talking? This is Maddie. Sorry. Hey, Maddie. Um, so when you go to those new builds, do you, you know, call them in advance and schedule an appointment or how do you go about doing that? Yes, Maddie. You know what I did, Maddie? I went on the builder to realtor Facebook page. If you're not on that, join it. And I just put a post. I said, Hey guys, I'm looking to incorporate more new builds into my business this year. Is there anyone out there who has, um, models or new builds that I can come and tour and learn more about your product and, and give you some extra exposure. I don't know how exactly I worded it, but I had a rep from every single builder in central Ohio comment on that and tell me, yes, please come, please. They're begging for business. Please come out and shoot video here. DR Horton will let you do open houses. Um, you know, so, so yes, to answer your question, Maddie, yes, I did that post. And then the people that reached out to me on that post, I texted them or called them on the side and set those appointments up. I do these bi-weekly um, and they're the, they're a great way to, to get B-roll. But Maddie, I know you do a lot of B-roll type stuff where it's just like yeah. you with captions. Um, that's a great place to get B-roll footage for those type of posts, which I showed earlier. Okay. And do you just bring your um, phone to those appointments? Oh yeah. Like I um, I got it in an office here today. This is one of the pieces of, equi of equipment that I use. Hopefully you guys can see this. It's just a it's just a, a light ring with a bipod. And that's all I that's all I've taken with me so far, Maddie. But I've also ordered a gimbal gyro stabilizer for the iPhone to make those videos look a little bit better. 
you don't have to get that though. I mean, you, you're you're perfectly fine shooting it on your phone. Most most new phones, the camera is very good, so you don't have to worry about going out there and spending top dollar on equipment. This thing was like twenty five bucks on on Amazon, and I've broken it like four times, and but it's still it's still hanging in there. And I use it for a lot of different stuff. And for those videos that you saw of me at the new builds, this guy is there with me at those. So okay, that's, gotcha. that's pretty much the only equipment that I take. I also have a lapel microphone. It was like another 20 bucks on Amazon. It plugs into the charging cord on your iPhone and becomes your new audio input. Um, you can get one of those as well if you want to. It's not a necessity though. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Guys, um, this was an introductory. Uh, I know it's 704. You guys can hop off whenever you're ready, but this was an intro introductory. Social Media 102 will be more in depth about how to run ads um how to achieve certain things on these platforms so stay tuned for that um it'll be coming in the in the weeks or months to come I'm not sure exactly what day it'll fall on but thank you guys all so much for being here tonight keep getting out there and crushing it <clears throat> as always um the amp program has a lot of leaders that are happy to help anybody that needs it so reach out to mark d'andrea reach out to mark hutchinson reach out to malika smith reach out to myself reach out to dana reach out to gina reach out to any of the leaders we're all really happy to help everybody survive and thrive. So have a great night, guys. We're going to get on out of here. Um, this video will be sent out to everybody in a recorded form. So thank you for coming, and I'm going to sign off.